be here with you in Barcelona today at the first Barcelona Rum Conference. And uh, it looks like we have a really wonderful event here, very well organized. And it's my pleasure to talk to you today about rum travel. Now, who likes rum? Who likes travel? Who likes rum travel? How bad could that be, right? Oh, what a beautiful picture. So, you can drink rum at home, and that's good. But rum is made in 80 countries around the world. So how do we go and visit all these countries and visit the distilleries? One of the ways we do it is by traveling to distilleries. And in November every year, we put on a cruise for people who want to visit all of the Caribbean islands. Is this my ticker? So what's the advantage of rum travel? Well, people travel to understand wine and cognac and tequila. And also, it's wonderful to travel to understand rum, to gain a greater understanding. Now, there's so many destinations that you could visit, from Guatemala, from Panama, from Jamaica, from uh, Barbados, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, on and on. But rum isn't just in the Caribbean. Rum is also in Southeast Asia. Rum is in India. Rum is in the Philippines. Rum is in Mauritius. Rum is in Africa. Why do we travel? To become familiar with the destination of the origin of rum. Over here you have the rums of Venezuela. Well, it's wonderful that they're here and that we can study their rums. We can taste their rums and we can talk to their experts. But also imagine if you visit Venezuela to, to go to the distilleries yourself, you get a, a wonderful context of why their rum is different, how they make their rum. And this is true with any destination. So everybody uses fermentation, everybody uses molasses, everybody uses a still, but everybody does it differently. And so to really understand a particular rum, you need to see how they do it, how their cane is grown, how they cut the cane. Are they making uh, cane syrup? Are they making molasses? Are they making cane juice? And so becoming familiar at the source and understanding in context gives us a true understanding of what we're tasting and why it tastes this way. Now the next time that we taste this rum, our mind takes us back to the source and we remember the, the method and the technology that was used. And this gives us a greater appreciation for rum. To understand rum is to, is to give it value. And, uh, and the more value you can ascribe to the rum, the rum that you like, uh, is, to, is to increase your appreciation of rum. This also leads us to brand loyalty. When you visit a distillery, you're much more likely to understand and appreciate that brand and to tell your friends about it. And so when we visit distilleries and when distillers, producers have a, a robust program for visitors, this creates great brand loyalty and it creates people who are then acting as ambassadors for the brand. I think we got ahead of ourselves there. Oh, can we go back one? Go back. Ah, I like to see the ship. So, in the Eastern Caribbean, we have so many rum distilleries. And yet, if you try to visit every distillery and put all that rum in your baggage, it's too much baggage for the airplane, right? So we said, let's go on a cruise ship and we'll go for one week and we'll visit many different destinations and collect rum from every destination. So this will be the most efficient way to visit the most distilleries in a week. So we can visit seven, eight, nine, or 10 distilleries in one week.
Mm -hmm. ah. So, we're starting our, our rum cruise in Puerto Rico. Now, Puerto Rico exports probably 50% of all the rum sold in the United States. So it's a very important destination. And so starting in Puerto Rico, we're going to visit Bacardi and Dancu, and we might visit Barilito. So right away on one island, we're visiting three distilleries, three rum producers that are of uh, major producers that are important in the world. Now we don't have to travel very far to get to St. Croix, and we're going to find there the Cruzan Distillery. Hey, T and Burrell. And then as we go down the islands from north to south, we might visit St. Kitts, we might visit Nevis, we might visit Antigua. In Antigua, we're going to find a wonderful rum brand there, English Harbor. And they've got a, a unique copper column still that uh, produces a, a type of rum that's very different from their competitors. And when you've seen that yourself, when you've visited the distillery there, you get a real, a real understanding of why their rum is so different. Martinique is one of the great meccas for rum. There are at least nine distilleries operating in Martinique. The French have their own style of making rum, and, and you must visit Martinique when you're traveling to understand rum. St. Lucia nearby is probably one of the less known, but one of the most interesting producers of rum in the Eastern Caribbean. And St. Lucia Distillers, for example, has three different pot stills that, that make some really rich, old-style rum, and, they've, and they can blend it together with their column still and come up with a real wonderful uh, variations of, of rum in St. Lucia. The most underappreciated rum, perhaps, in the Eastern Caribbean comes from St. Lucia. Now, Barbados, Barbados is the king of Eastern Caribbean rum. You have to visit Barbados. Mount Gay, everybody knows. Uh, Four Square Distillery, a lot of people know. And there's a little distillery at a beautiful uh, plantation that was restored from the 1800s, and it's called St. Nicholas Abbey. And at St. Nicholas Abbey, you can take in the beauty of the plantation, the restoration, and you can also take in their small still and they're the only ones in Barbados that are making rum directly from their own cane and their own cane syrup. Ah, so what does it look like? We're gonna watch how the crane is, the cane is crushed. Some have a small crush like you see here in St. Lucia. Some have a very large operation. Uh, and it's very rustic, isn't it? You see it's all happening at a small level. We go inside the laboratory and we look at evaluation and product testing. And look at the samples that are used for the blending. We talk with the people that run the operation so we can learn from them exactly how they're making their rum. And of course, we have to taste rum. So here's a picture of our old friend, Laurie Bernard, who, who passed away a couple of years ago. He was the master distiller at St. Lucia. And he, he worked tirelessly to give them an operation that could make unique rum that wasn't like anybody else's. And to be able to sit with him personally and talk with him about the making of rum is a wonderful experience, a true highlight of my life. And what they've done for us is they've taken a bunch of barrel samples and we're able to sample so many of the different rums and their expressions right from the barrels. Here's an example of their, one of their three pot stills, a copper pot still. It's a Vendôme, a French still. They've also got two John Doerr stills. And then they've taken us into the uh, aging room. 
where we can see all the different marks that they have aging. And then the bottling line shows the actual final process of putting the blends into bottles. And here we are in a, with a large group with our guide showing us from the final stages of aging going into the blending tanks. And what they'll do, they'll fill up these tanks with whatever product they're making at the time and have it ready for the uh, bottling stage. One of the greatest opportunities is if you can sit down in a very quiet setting with the makers of their rum and go through a guided touring, a guided taste of their rum. That's truly a VIP experience. You're not going to get that if you just visit the distillery as a consumer. But being able to sit down with the master himself and discuss all of his rums and his philosophy. This is to really appreciate rum, huh? And we see here in Antigua, they have uh, their copper column still, which is unique to the Eastern Caribbean. They have their control valves here. They're always watching production here and testing. And then they take us to the tasting room where we can taste all of their different rums and of course purchase some rum. We're in the Caribbean, we're tasting rum, what do we want to do? We want to purchase some rum for a good price on the island and, and understand that rum in context and bring it home to our collection. Ah. Tra traveling, it can be so confusing sometimes when you travel and you drink rum. What looks better than a big glass of rum up close, right? Now in Puerto Rico, I think the Bacardi distillery is one of the biggest ones in the world. So you can compare that to the small distilleries that we visited. It's a huge 400 acre property and of course, like Disneyland, you get a tram. You start with a tram. And there's the bat. You have to see the bat when you visit Bacardi, right? Beautiful tile work. And here we are entering the famed Cathedral of Rum entrance. They're producing their own, let's go back one. Ah, <laughs> and forward one. All right, whatever. It's like a bat cave, like Batman. They have their own bat elevator. You gotta love that. So here's their, uh, their schematic of their process. The fermentation tanks are some of the largest ones we've ever seen. And the tour includes quite a, quite a good presentation by the masters of all of their process of how they're making rum in Puerto Rico. Here's the view from on top of the building. And you can see this is old San Juan in the background. And over here is a very unique building, sort of in the style of a manta ray or a bat, where it's the, uh, the exhibitor center where you can taste different rums. And notice over here we have uh, a wind generator. So Bacardi is making a big effort to, uh, to be conservative on their energy use and to uh, recycle. And I think that when we learn about those things, when we see them in person, it gives us more appreciation for the whole uh, concept and, and what their values are.
Now we're traveling and we're drinking rum, but we're also enjoying beautiful places, right? Doesn't that look enticing? You're hanging out on the cruise ship with your friends every night, you're drinking rum, you're comparing stories, you've got to go visit the rum shacks, you see the most beautiful little places, and if you're really crazy, you can drink old rum with a straw right out of the bottle. In St. Martin, we find some hand-painted bottles of rum. Every one is a little different. And uh, that makes a wonderful gift, a memento to bring home for somebody from your trip. The beach in St. Martin is beautiful, isn't it? This is worth the price of admission right there. So of course, you're traveling and you're drinking rum, but you're also visiting some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. And again, you're drinking. Oh, and there's pirates. You can't go too far without finding a pirate, right? And the color of the ocean, the color of the sea is just beautiful, isn't it? It makes me want to go back. Oh, wait, I'm going to go back next month. There, there's a guy that isn't worrying about too much. And, uh, I'm still looking for a bottle that big. I haven't found it yet. It won't fit in my luggage. And that's it. That's rum travel. So I hope you've enjoyed a little vicarious travel, a little vicarious rum tasting. You've got all the rums around you here. And when it's time to travel, find your favorite locations and go visit and, and see those distilleries working themselves. Everything from the cane being cut to the final aging, and I think you'll gain a greater appreciation for your rum through travel. Thank you.